Barbara Cruz. I can see you. Can we go ahead and test your audio? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to mute myself if that's, if that's okay. Absolutely. Hi, Danielle. Hey, you, you got the link. Well, I kind of just pressed on it off the agenda and it went boom. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If, if I don't send out the link like I'm supposed to, just check the agenda. The link's always in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. But yeah. It's, no it's been a week. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Bad. I just wish the world was more settled. If you know what I mean. I know. Ugh. I I feel you there. Definitely do. It looks like there was some good stuff for Santa Rosa that got passed. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Measure O for the county and Measure P for the county both were passed. Yeah. Although it looks like the sheriff took Measure P to uh he's. He's suing to repeal Measure P. Oh, he filed today in court. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. Did he <laughs> then, get um, uh, let's see. We also have um, new council members, so that's exciting. That is exciting. I, although I don't know what 
what's going on with District 7? Um, last I saw, it was too close to call. Oh, with um, Roger, uh, Je- what's her name? Jeanette or? Natalie Rogers. Natalie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm going to look it up right now. Um, but uh, Roseland and South Park have their new rap. That's so cool. So it's Eddie and. Yeah, uh, so it's Eddie. Oh my God, I cannot spell. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there we go. Um, Eddie Alvarez is District 1. District 3 is Jack. Uh, he was reelected. Yeah. District 5 is Chris Rogers. He was reelected. And now I think I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Um, it looks like. So yeah, 19 out of 21 re, uh, precincts reporting Natalie Rogers has a lead of 43%, 43.2%. Oh. And Eric Christensen has 39.6%. So I think it's too close oh. to call right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I helped Carolyn with her SRJC and I'm most happy that she got it. Really, yeah. Carolyn Bermuelos. Nice. Yeah. Um, I told her, I said, there's got to be rules there about whoever has the best signs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to put them in great locations because when you go to the ballot box, and I've done this myself, you mm-hmm. just key on the word, the names that you saw. I mean, like, because you don't know most of those people. I mean, right. So yeah. how do you pick them, right? Hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we need... Have- her from Carly. Um, I think she was supposed to be here. She said the agenda looked good, so. Um, Maybe she just ran it a little bit late. Possibly. Let me. Do we need a quorum for this meeting? Yeah. If we have a quorum anyway, so oh, it doesn't okay. matter. Yeah. Hi, Sheree. I saw you today riding your bike, and I'm like, okay, she's talking, and I'm not going to distractor <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah all right um so get started yeah or... let's go ahead and get started okay so it is 5 33 on my computer and i'm calling the meeting to order and the first thing on the agenda oh roll call um so let's see i have well, uh, all members present except for member, sorry, coach, vice chair Moore. Um, That's all we have on our committee now? Oh my God. I still need to talk to member Harper. I mean, not Harper, member Foster about this. Okay. Um, he wasn't at the cab meeting um, last time. So I wasn't able to let him know. Um, I just, I, like I said, it's been a crazy last week. So I just need to schedule some time with him and, and just t- chat with him real quick about that. And he's um, the isn't, um, older gentleman. Mm-hmm. Way, okay. But isn't he part, he's Dick Dowd's appointment, correct? Yeah, that's true, actually. So he's probably, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. He, so, uh, I mean, his, so that was Julie's seat. Dick Dowd was appointed. And now we have a full, we have a new council mm-hmm. that will take. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to remember how this works now. So December is the reorganization meeting and then they'll be sworn in and then they'll elect the mayor and then the mayor yeah. has to decide on board and commission chairs and then the new cab mem- or the new city council members then have to make their appointments. So if he wants to say, if Kevin wants to stay on, he's going to have to uh, uh, he's going to have to reach out to the newly electeds. Yeah. Um, yes. So probably Chris Rogers because that's his area. Um, Which is really crazy. Actually, right? just kidding. Because I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. yeah, they're still have... trying to, that's getting rolled out because my understanding <laughs> yeah. is that we're, our, mm-hmm. our seat assignments stay if you're already appointed. Yeah. Unless they make the chance, but now as the as the districts are happening, yeah, new appointments are supposed to, I believe, align with it. This yeah. the exception is cab because one of the appointments 
is based on the cab districts, not the council districts, and then one is at large. So that's where it gets, it's going to be interesting, but I'm sure that'll be part of, I mean, I know this is something they've been talking about leading yes. up to. Um, the, the uh, appointment, the board commissions and committees appointment um, policy states that, that um, cab members can stay in their, their positions until the new cab members are appointed. So technically he and the others who, um, whose terms are up um, can stay until um, either they're reappointed or new members are selected. So, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. So when does that new time frame start? January? I think they have until, so they get sworn in at um, the first December uh, council meeting and uh -huh. the mayor, new mayor and vice mayor are selected at that meeting. And I believe these council members have until I don't remember when, I think it's like the end of January or something like that to select their new appointees for all of their boards and commissions. Wow, okay. So please let your, um, and I can make this announcement at the CAB meeting, but please let people in your areas know um, that there's a bunch of openings to apply to the CAB, get their applications in, um, I'll send it to everybody on the cab so you have the link to, directly to the application. Um, but if people are interested, they need to get their applications in because then they're sent to those um, council members and they review and hold interviews and select people. So I was kind of, I'm just going to take myself as an example. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really in the right district. We always talked about that. <laughs> and Jack is the one that uh, appointed me or nominated me. And then I'm in Chris Rogers district. <laughs> so what happens? We don't know yet. We oh, really don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. So right now you're still his appointee. He will have to reappoint you though. Okay. Um, regardless, once he starts his new term, um, because your appointment is up with, you know, with the end of his first term as council member. Okay. Um, and, and that officially is the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so much for roll call. <laughs> no, no, right. <laughs> so public comments. This is a time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Public comment may be made live during the meeting via Zoom. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Public comments may also be submitted by 5 p.m. the Tuesday, 11-3, November 3rd, before the subcommittee meeting via email at communityengagement at sanrosrcity.org or via recorded voice message at 707-543-3080. Recorded voice message comments will be played up to three minutes each at the time that the agenda item is discussed during the subcommittee meeting each Public comments, um, oh, email public comments will be provided to all subcommittee members prior to the meeting. Do we have any public comment? And I don't think so. No, just we don't have anybody else here. All so. right. So, new business uh, 3.1 cab orientation toolkit. And Danielle sent out the orientation packet. And is this where we're going to review that or any additional edits on this document? Yeah. Um, I did see. have a couple things that I saw that mm -hmm. I probably should have let you know before today. Um, but just reading it, it's like there's some kind of um, realignment of the subcommittees because we no longer have the operations. And are you going to change that section, the strategic planning overview? Or are we, are we planning on having the operations subcommittee in the future. Let me hold on just a second. I just realized, so because I work from two different computers. Yeah. I didn't save this here. So I'm saving it real quick and then I will get to your question. Um, Cause I need to be looking at this with you. Um, here it is. Okay. Final. Okay. So All right. So which part? Um, 
Page three under um, strategic plan overview where you describe and list yes. the yeah. subcommittees. So yeah. I did, so under operations and I could like bold this or make it stand out more. Uh, right underneath it, it said completed strategy and integrated subcommittee with the expert, oh, with expertise. Okay. Didn't see yeah, that. so it's there. Um, I can just take this out completely to, though to avoid confusion. It They'll still see it in the strategic plan document though. So it's up to you guys. I kind of would like to, um, it's recorded in history and memorialized that we complete these tasks, but it might be kind of confusing for new people. Like, well, mm -hmm. what about that operations strategy subcommittee? But, or maybe that comment can be next to the empowerment or the expertise that that got incorporated into that expertise group. I don't know. What do you think, Sherry? Sherry, you're on mute though. <laughs> I am on mute. My husband's <laughs> off work, so I don't, if he's oh. wandering around in the background, I don't want you guys to have to hear clinging pots or anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. So I'm actually over here trying to pull up the document as we're discussing it. And of course, all right, there we go. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so as far as, um, you know, part of me is like, cause I wish uh, Carly was on this cause she was kind of instrumental. I know. <laughs> this piece. I'm fine, you know, um, and it could just be election fatigue, but I'm fine with it. I, I don't have, you know, there's, I just don't have any fight in me today. I'm just like, it looks great. It's there, you know, and part of me also knows is that we're going to roll into the, you know, 2021, we're going to have potentially what, you know, three, four new members that are going to come on board. So we're going to have a test run of this yeah. pretty immediately. Um, and I think that's part of me is like, I just want to get it rolled out so that we can find the bugs and see what's missing in there. Because I mean, what brought a lot of this on was Carly and um, Miles and Lainey. Jenny Lynn, you know, several cab board members that came on board mm -hmm. and stepped into the role and went, wait, what exactly did I sign up for? So I think um, we we're going to have that. <laughs> yeah, I think we all right. Yeah. right. And that's part of what cabs you know, the, you know, the deer in the headlights moment of like, wait, what do I get myself into? <laughs> well, the um, question on the table, Sheree, sure, sure is the uh, operation strategy where on page four or page three, it's describing the work that's happened in that committee. But to me, I was thinking that can we either leave it out? It's not happening anymore. I mean, that history is memorialized in other documents that person wanted to know more about it. Can we make yeah. that comment under expertise strategy, take that that parens and put them up under the next one saying, the operation strategy subcommittee completed uh, their work and is incorporated into this group. I don't know. I just don't want it to confuse anybody. Like I want to be on the operations committee or something. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I think, Sheree, what do you think about that? Is that Something well, else. and the, considering that of the people who are on operations, <laughs> um, one of the three is still on the cab. So I don't, you know, like the two people I could see who would be, you know, have the most to say about it in terms of, you know, historical, you know, would want it to be known aren't on the cab anymore. So yeah, I kind of feel like we can just roll it into, okay, um, and we can roll it into expertise under um, the understanding that this was, you know, I, yeah, I think it can absolutely be 
combined in under expertise. Um, With an explanation. Yeah, well, and, you know, and then it simplifies it down to these are the two subcommittees we have. Here's their purpose. And under expertise is operations because it was um, the tasks that it was given under the strategic plan uh, were, com you know, completed. And then it just made more sense to uh, combine it into, to uh, condense it. Yeah. And it's also in the strategic plan itself. I mean, it's there it for eternity, right? I mean, so if people wanted to know more about it or what it did, or if we had to resurrect it or something else it, it's this framework's yeah. there yeah um, yep. okay that's all that was my only thing um and i had a comment about uh do we we don't need motions or anything like that we're just reviewing all right um right. there's an orientation like um and i'm like was that a, how long has the boards and commissions orientation thing been going on because I don't remember ever going to that. So it happens. It's not every year that it happens. Uh -huh. It is supposed to happen though. And so I think the, when you came on, we also had our brand new city clerk at the time come on. And so it may have been missed. Um, and then she did it. And I think she did it in 20, early 2019. So even oh. some of our newer cab members had already been there for like a year. And so they finally got that orientation, which yeah. um, they, you know, they were, they, they found it helpful. It's also actually on the, um, the recording of the last one is on the city clerk's website. So oh. I could add a link to that um, in oh, yeah. here. Um, so, so the new, new folks can watch that. Um, but I think they're supposed to be doing it like the workshop. They're supposed to be doing it every other year, the recruitment workshop. Um, they do every other year. So I think they're supposed to be doing that, um, that new member orientation. So the next one would be 2021. So it'd be just yes. enough for this group of people. That's I great. hope so. Oh, <laughs> if nothing else happens in the world. If nothing else happens and, you know, we're all still here. That'd be great. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm actually, oops, I'm double checking and looking this up right now as, um, but you guys can keep, keep chatting. And then I was, I don't even know if I even should say this out loud, but um, I was just adding up the hours. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. Um, but it's just something I noticed. Um, so in the new one, I don't remember if I took out the old, or if I sent out her old document, because um, I started with her old document and I, I pared it down quite a bit. She mm -hmm. had a whole chart of everything broken down into hours, oh. number of hours, but to me, it doesn't make sense to put it in there right now because we're not even doing in-person yeah. events at this point. And we don't want to scare anybody because that, that would probably be kind of scary, I think. So we mentioned that people after the fact yes you know? after they get sworn in <laughs> after yeah you've already committed to this so um uh, so let's, <laughs> let's see um let me go well it's not there so maybe they took it down but maybe it's under boards and commissions and then i was thinking wow i always thought about oh. Cherie and all the other people are putting in extra time on top of this time <laughs> it is it's on the boards and commissions website it's actually they did it last year but it was oh. two years ago um so yeah they do have the video here so i i can um uh include the link to that in this document so people can actually look at it was anyway. there also an event that uh i know that we went to a luncheon one time it's kind of like a thank you Thing to all the boards mm -hmm. and commissions is that like maybe a tentative calendar date or whatever it's calendar for so people could go oh yeah I need to put that on my calendar no it so it was canceled this year obviously and yeah. they they it's usually in June I think June or July 
and they they typically send the the date out closer to they don't schedule it that far out okay. unfortunately yeah but maybe like that just there might be a mention of that in there somewhere that there will be oh, uh, yeah something that I don't know because I I think I like out of all the years I went one time and I think I kind of missed it or I had double bookings and I would have liked to have scheduled it you know at least know it was coming and that way I could yeah. make time for it. Free, have you been to that one? It always falls. It's always fallen when I'm at work. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the luncheon. And so, cause they have one, I think for chairs as well that, and, or, you know, but yeah, it's always when I'm at, you know, I've always been in a position where I've had either a job that I had to be at and the timing didn't work or oh, yeah. I had an event like it's always conflicted with something else that's gone on um thankfully I haven't had the stress of having me you know, like because there's award recipients at that as well and I haven't gotten you know I haven't had to worry about that overlap but there's always something that is conflicted with it because it's like on a Wednesday at mm -hmm. noon or something <laughs> It's like noon to one thirty or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why it should be mentioned because then we can kind of like keep our eyes, you know, or looking out for it. Um, Cause that'd be nice to go to. I enjoyed it the one time I went. Um, nice snacks, yum. <laughs> that was a judge of the event on how good the food is. I, I went for the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you with secondary. It's a food that really told me I was thanked. Um, it's a good, yeah. Okay, so I'll add that in there. Um, okay. I don't have any other things. That was just uh, the things I thought about as I was reading it. And I think it's great. I think it's a really good tool for new people. Um, any comments? Member Bar Barnett? No? Okay. Moving on to um, new business 3.2 mentors for new cab members. Oh, so really sorry to go back to the last. Um, do you want me to take this now to the cab for their full approval to use? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just okay. We will do that then. Um, okay. Mentor, mentors for new cab. Uh, new CAB members, subcommittee will develop an outline for CAB to use for mentoring new members. Oh boy. So are we just doing like a quick like cheat checklist that we need to do for the mentor we'll do with check off as it's working with them or she is working with the mentee? Okay. I think so I think we may have talked about this um, at one point or another. Let me see um, if I can find anything on it. I actually don't think there. Oh, you know what? It might be other minutes. <sighs> they kind of kind of went with the toolkit, right? I mean, like there's things in the toolkit package mm -hmm. that they need to know and be aware of, like the districts, you know, how the departments, the city of Santa Rosa, um, how often we meet. Yeah. Meet. The, um, they're going to get all the other stuff like the Brown Act and all that other training somewhere else, right? Yeah. Um, but we would be go just reminding them of the things that they need to do, maybe, or um, and yeah. talk about just kind of maybe just explain to them on a personal level the subcommittees and just all things that we do on the board what is that what's a what's a cab grant program what's a cig and the all those things that we do as cab just kind of meet with them maybe mm -hmm. um so mentoring programs so these are the notes that i have um okay. and, and we definitely can um reconfigure this the idea was to have out of the 14 members choose the seven most senior members to mentor the seven most junior members. Okay. That was when we were at a place where we actually had that good split. So it might not make sense anymore. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Um, subcommittee members, um, these, sub, this subcommittee, they like the process and styles of mentorship outlined in 
Oh, in the mentorship document handed out by member Varela. So this was a long time ago. <laughs> I think I remember that. So I'll have to try to find it. Um, mentorship should be time limited. So the subcommittee originally said that um, three months was a good time um, and develop a one page handout that helps to shape what mentors should focus on uh, and incorporate it into the, the toolkit or the, the orientation document. Um, so that's kind of where this group left off last time. Um, okay. Again, totally up to you guys. I kind of feel like if we're going to be ready for these new CAB members that are going to come start coming in, maybe we can, um, one, the next CAB meeting or maybe the December meeting, we need to talk about the mentorship process a little bit and kind mm -hmm. of make sure that we all have the same understanding and we kind of know what the expectation is from us. And from there, I feel like once we have this handout that Varela Mike gave us, which I can't even remember what it looked like, actually. I don't know if I still have it. We'll see. <laughs> okay, but we can probably find something. Um, mm -hmm. But and then go over the, the one page handout of what the, uh, the items to focus on and then ask people at the next meeting to, you know, like maybe we don't know who's going to be matched up with who, but who would like to be, you know, in the queue to pick up the next new cab member, ask for volunteers. And um, do you have to be on cab for a certain amount of time? I mean, to be a mentor. That's, We've never done this before, so. Right. Yeah. yeah. How yeah, many I mean, I, You know, the we've never, you know, when I joined in 2013, Damn. Tanya Nareth was one of the senior members along with Lee and Russ. And yeah, there was no formal anything. Our orientation and our orientation binder was done by the assistant city manager. And she just kind of called me and Lucinda in. And we just had this informal discussion about roles and responsibilities. And we got handed the resolution and we got handed the council documents that had been updated um, for what the cab was supposed to do. But we had no strategic plan. Um, it was just kind of like, here you go. <laughs> and, um, and that was, that was kind of our, our starting point of like finding out about, you know, what the cab was. And I think every board member will say it takes about a year just to kind of get your feet under you of what the board is all about. Um, and on top of everything else, our priorities as a board coincide to council goals. Well, council goals are getting revisited. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I think that's something, you know, they're going to change. Right. And so that's the other part about it is like, I think the mentorship idea is a great idea, um, just to give people kind of historical context, but I also kind of see it as this is going to be an interesting challenge because we're going to be doing this via zoom probably till this time next year. Um, so I think it's a great thing to talk about with the board and maybe, you know, start up on a volunteer basis of like, who wants to do extra Zoom meetings? <laughs> Orientate new CAB board members. Um, so that's something to think about because otherwise, you know, it's like, you know, the city's not going to do, we're not doing any city events in person. Um, I think Leslie yeah. had the idea that, you know, what we can do right now is when the city does put the connections newsletter out when they do put resources out that we can cheerlead and help disseminate. Um, but I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I would put it before the, at this point, I would put it before the existing board. We should probably between now and the meeting uh, for November, uh, you and Magali should probably get a list of who's yeah. up. Uh, I have yeah, mm -hmm. I, well, but I would also think that you need a list that's going to say who would fit the criteria to be a mentor. I mean, you just said one year experience to kind of, I mean, this last year has been really crazy. 
But I mean, if we can identify the, the cab members that have an, enough experience to be considered a mentor, you know, they know enough to be there to help these new cab members because they're knowing they don't, I gotta assume they don't know anything and, but they have the energy and they want to do it. So we have to fill them in and maybe this is a good time to think about it because there's not enough, not a lot of events going on, then you know, we're going to pick up steam and they'll be ready for it. I mean, I'm kind of thinking of it that way, like it's a downtime, but we mm -hmm. can do our internal work and just get our new cab members, our newbies up to speed on what, what we do and our expectations when we are, when we are able to, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to nix it though. I don't want to not do it. I think it's important, but maybe we'll get a sense from the cab members in December or November. Is it on the agenda for November, Danielle? For the mentoring? Yeah. Or no, no. It's December, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know, maybe there's a, there's five or six of us that say, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. And you're really just doing one-on-ones with that person and answering questions and kind of, you know, they, they can do Zoom or they can put a mask on and go downtown to the square or whatever they want to do that's comfortable for them. They can mentor that person and ask their questions and maybe they have a question about the, um, I don't know, the sex, some of these trainings that they have to go, whatever they want. I mean, that's kind of what a mentor does. It's just there to be available to walk them through the process and answer questions, a direct link. And that way, Danielle probably wouldn't get bombarded because they're going to go to somebody if they have a question. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Sheree, do you think this is like so, too much to ask? Um, I'm trying to understand where you're coming from or what your take on it is. I just think that. Um... <laughs> I just think that mentorship and the investment that goes into it, I mean, Mike had mentioned it being a three month commitment. Um, but I think that, you know, who's up uh, in, you know, whose term ends in December, 2020, who's coming back on the cab, starting there, right. Kind of gauging that list of the folks that are coming forward and then just kind of finding out who's got the bandwidth for it right now. Um, because in a non-pandemic setting, you'd be scheduling a coffee meeting, you'd be doing a, you know, one-on-one -on -one sit down, kind of going over, um, our strategic planning documents, kind of getting someone up to speed. They'd also be meeting in person with Danielle and they'd be meeting in person with Magali. Um, and, you know, all of those. Uh, you know, it's, it's the first three months that you kind of have a gauntlet of, of stuff that you have to do between orientation packet, uh, kind of new member onboarding that happens now. And uh, depending, you know, like what the timeline is, usually the trainings kind of start in that first yeah. three month window. Um, so what, what you're saying is not too much to do. <laughs> I'm trying to I just, just don't, you know, I would want to make sure bringing it to the cab because one of the things that, you know, the subcommittees can come up with these great ideas, but if the board itself doesn't want to, or is having a bandwidth issue, you know, right. So what this would be this year or bringing it forward would be uh, existing cab board members would have to schedule virtual meetings with the newly appointed um you don't have to do that but there's other ways to do it you don't have I mean, to. Yeah, it could be a phone call you know absolutely it could be even coffee if you wanted to i just i mean like there's social distancing and there's a place where you can have coffee out in the park or whatever i mean it's up to those two people right yeah i just i don't want to give up on it i just feel like if we're going to do this it's part of our strategic plan and we're, that's part of what we said we were going to do. And isn't that the next step? Really? Yeah. Um, just to give you guys a picture. We currently have two vacant seats. 
um, and those council members are not coming back. Um, and then we have one, two, three, four, five uh, seats uh, that are up for reappointment um, with two with two of those five, the, their council members are not coming back. And so we could potentially have, if all of you guys decide to stay, the ones who are being appointed, that includes you two, if you decide to stay, then we could potentially have four new members. So, uh, so Cherie, take you out of the mix, right? You're, you're busy. I don't see you having bandwidth. I'm just saying that out loud because you're just, I mean, it's a lot of hours, but okay. What about, let's just think about our senior members. Um, uh, Vince. Vince. Uh, Cecile. Yeah, Cecile. I would also put you in senior member at this point. <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> I took over Linda's spot, I think. But anyway. Yeah. And you started uh, in 2017, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then the other person that started like around the same time as you is Danny. And I don't think Danny, honestly, unless, mm -hmm. well, unless he's mentoring someone who's younger coming in. Um, I don't know if he, and we'll, we have, we'll have to gauge that with him, but I don't know if he would feel confident enough to do that. Um, yeah. I would feel confident. I think Vince would feel confident. And I think Cecile would feel confident, but talking about three people. Right. And then potentially four new ones. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, if, if really just being available to them and kind of going through the toolkit and kind of just mm -hmm. having one-on-ones with them, it doesn't mean that you have to meet with them, you know, a set time. It's just really basically up to those two people. If they want to meet more often or answer questions that, you know, email each other and, you know, kind of be there for that person, yeah. um, I could probably do too, if, as long as I knew that the, I'm not doing this forever. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I'm helping them learn. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Maybe we have to see what Cecile and Vince have to say about it. I know. I'm a little worried about those two also. Because <laughs> their capacity is like. Uh, so, so. Uh. so, Danielle, in your professional opinion, is this like a. What would you say? I mean, if you're, you know, really want to know your opinion on about about it or trying to be too. Well, I think it started out as a really good idea because we had that equal number of new folks to senior folks, right? Or seasoned folks, <laughs> I shouldn't say senior. Um, it's a little more tricky. We might be able to pull Carly. Carly's been with us for two years now. Yeah. So we might be able to pull her into this as well if she feels comfortable enough. Um, plus, we also have, and I mean, I can also see Leslie, even though she's only been with a cab for a year, I can still, and hasn't done, actually, she hasn't been with the cab for a year. She's only been with the cab for a little while and um, hasn't had the full cab experience, but she has a ton of community experience, like yeah. events. And, um, I mean, she did table with me at, at the Halloween at Howarth event, so <laughs> she got a little bit there, but, um, I, I could see her being a mentor too. So maybe we do put this out to the cab and just get a feel. Mm -hmm. And if it's not something that members feel equipped to do right now, maybe we re revisit it in like six months and see, um, there was also you're proposing the it for the December or you're proposing it for November in the report. Actually, out. let's put it on the, um, on the, the November, November agenda out. and just get this out of the way along with the, the toolkit. We'll present it all as one package. Um, and we'll go from there and, and get that feel that way. We know for sure if we're moving forward with this or not. So we can, if we are, then we need to get it together so that we're ready for the new 
new people coming. Well, up. and I think we need to discuss expectations on this mm -hmm. of what, you know, what we're expecting the board members to be willing to commit to. And what I heard was three months and kind of a giving new board members kind of an overview and update or, you know, basically bringing them up to speed on what the community advisory board does, our history, kind of extending the orientation and then being there to field any questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I say be there available, email, phone, whatever, Zoom to if they needed to check in or they have questions, you know, just as they need it more. I think in the beginning, like the first part of it, you probably would spend you know, four hours over probably a couple weeks or three weeks just explaining things or answering their questions or maybe not even that much. I mean, maybe it'll be less of that. But as you go through the three months, I would imagine it's just that they'll eventually learn everything they need to learn and, and it won't be needed. I don't know. Basically, yeah. a mentor to me is you're there. You're the go-to person if you have questions, right? And it kind of alleviates some of the pressure off of Danielle's office to be the, you know, the, you know, the guru. Like it kind of takes some of the pressure off of you. I think. I don't know. And mm -hmm. the mentor can also say that's a good question. Now uh, let me let me take it up with Danielle, or, and you know, yeah. that, I don't like it has to be so complicated that it's a like finder or uh, something that's viral bound and, you know, we're signing a commitment paper or something. It's just right. kind of more informal, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so too. I don't think we have to make it like super over the top, but just yeah. to help get that person up to speed. And also, like you said, take stuff off my plate, which would be really helpful <laughs> <laughs> or just not even take stuff off my plate. It's just, um, providing some support. Yes. Yeah. Kind of triaging, like if we have, if we can answer the question and yeah. kind of feel that, you know, and then if we don't, we just elevate it. Yep. Okay. So I will put that on our agenda for November with some of these considerations that we've been talking about and then we'll have a discussion with the cab. Yeah, okay. they'll have lots of questions, I'm sure. We always do. We never fail in that world. I mean, um, asking for feedback. <laughs> so are we good? Are we good on that topic? We have a little plan. Develop an outline. We did not really develop an outline. That's okay. We came up with some considerations. So okay. 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 Moving on, 3.3, .3, community improvement grant program discussion items. Staff will provide questions. Uh, received by community man regarding a previously funded cap program, uh, cab grant program. Staff will ask for the subcommittee to discuss and make a recommendation on how to move forward with the community member's question. Okay. Okay. So did you both have a chance to read the email? No. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll okay. So um, it's from Judy Kennedy, who is in our I don't know if she's Burbank Gardens or Julia Gardens. Gardens area. Is she? Okay. So um, she emailed council, including the mayor. And um, it was regarding neighborhood banners. Um, she said the neighbor. So I know Sheree, you emailed me this, but um, also to give historical context to you, Veronica, they Burbank Gardens, along with a couple others, actually Julie Kennedy led led the charge on this. She turned in some grant applications to CAB for neighborhood banners for the downtown neighborhood groups. So um, <clears throat> she worked with a staff person at that time. Um, there were four banners in each of the 11 neighborhoods that surrounded downtown. Uh -huh. uh, there's also banners um, that I guess were put up in front of city hall uh, directed by the mayor at that time. Um, the original set of banners were funded by the CAB for about $7,000 for the 55 banners. Um, and I guess West End put their mo own money into that and bought two extra banners for their neighborhood. Um, the, that included the cost of printing the banners and the hardware for attaching them to the poles. 
a second set of, and that was in, she doesn't say, and that, that was, in, I know part of it was in 2013, 2014. Well, I'm getting to that. So this was prior to that. So this was oh. earlier on. Oh, okay. Yeah. The second set of banners was funded in 2014 from, for five different neighborhoods. Um, and uh, that was because the grants could not, she says exceed 500, but I think it was a thousand. Um, so now we're in a position where CAB only funds who participates in neighbor fest activities, not the venue for replacing neighborhood banners with so many other things going on in neighbor on neighborhood plates. I was going to propose to the council that perhaps the city manager could provide the funds necessary for reprinting and hanging the banners. At this point, printing banners is cheaper than ever. Looks like the banners can be reprinted now for about $50 a piece. And oh, so this is 2007 was the original, then uh, 2014. So in those two years, it was $103 per banner. So like I said, she sent it to uh, council and, oh, and the city manager. The city manager bounced it back to parks and to community engagement because of CAB. So basically they're asking if CAB would be willing to um, replace the banners in those neighborhoods. Now I can give you staff recommendations, but I wanted to bring it to this subcommittee because um, the subcommittee was involved in the process for revising the application and also the putting together the selection matrix and, and the evaluation process. So um, before we take it to the full CAB or, or not. So I can give you my staff recommendations or you guys can just discuss. It. So I wanna clarify just the, the ask. The ask is that the city council buy uh, new banners for neighborhoods or that had them before, they just want new ones or? They okay. wanna replace them because they're okay, replace the banners. Mm -hmm. And the costs have gone down. Does so she like give a $50 per banner? Yeah. And 55 or mm -hmm. that's about $3,000. So didn't we have money still from the last round of cab grants that didn't, I mean, I know we granted money, yeah. but then we didn't do anything because things happened, right? We yep. postponed them, we put them over. Are we going to get another lump of money? <laughs> so have a- I hope like, not. <laughs> you hope not? <laughs> there might be, there might be a proposal and I don't, I don't know this for sure. Um, there might be a proposal coming to the cab at some point to utilize some of those funds for COVID-19 recovery um, for, for neighborhoods. I don't know that for a fact that was a proposal that was made um and i don't even know what that would look like yeah um it was just kind of put out there because the cab did have some extra money so who knows this is um, part of covid recovery it's cheering. well let me Maybe. just let me just give my two cents as a staff person okay the cab grant program was designed to build neighborhood cohesion, build neighborhood, uh, community building, basically, right? Relationship building, et cetera, um, community engagement. Um, the, the other part of the CAB grant program that it states very um, plainly in the application is it's not meant to be, it's not intended to be something that's continually ongoing. Neighborhoods have to find a way to sustain their, their projects. Um, in addition to that, these are projects, the, the banners specifically have to be installed by the, um, by the city, I believe. Um, and now I'm not 100% clear, maybe Sheree, I don't know if you know this, maybe the, the uh, neighborhoods were involved in the design um, of these neighborhood banners. I just don't see how this was a, a community or neighborhood project that was designed to bring neighborhood neighbors together or community together. Um, the other thing is it's very much targeted for the downtown area. It doesn't include any other neighborhoods. Really? Oh. 
Mm -mm. This is all downtown neighborhoods. So the historical neighborhoods um, mm -hmm. and uh, so like Burbank Gardens, Juilliard Park, West End, Ridgeway, uh, Cherry Street neighborhood. mm -hmm. historic neighborhoods. Yeah, so they all have their neighborhood banners, right? Um, we have moved the focus obviously to NeighborFest, but we might want to revisit that because of COVID because I don't even know if we could do NeighborFest next year to be honest with you. Um, I'm just hesitant because like I said, I think the biggest thing for me is the neighborhood groups that are applying for these grants are supposed to outline how they're going to sustain this project beyond the CAB grant funds because it's supposed to be one-time funding, really. I know that there's groups that have come back and we even put it in the application that if you've applied now, if you've applied this year and get granted, then you have to take a year off, make it fair. Those are just my thoughts. Um, I'm, I, I, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are from the both of you. Um, and I think if you guys want wanted to move forward and approve this, I think you would have to take it to the full cab to get their permission to do so. I would want the full cab to have yeah. the input and be able to vote on it. I wouldn't want to take on that responsibility in this little group. Yeah. <laughs> get, get bombarded when we make a bad decision. Yeah. Um, so the protection of the group, which is good, but I, to me, there's, I have two feelings on it. One is, I think it is cohesive for neighborhoods to have like, um, this is our neighborhood, look at us, you know, it's nice to have those banners. And I don't think it's nice. What I don't like is that it's just restricted to certain neighborhoods now. I mean, like every neighbor, everybody's neighborhood's important. And it would be kind of cool, like if we did neighborhood fest that we would, build into the cost of the neighborhood fest, but we don't know if we're going to have them. Um, yeah. Like here's a, in addition to having neighborhood fest, we're going to also give you some banners, you know, for your neighborhood. So it'd be kind of like a, a reveal and that, but that's just a crazy idea. And then the other thing is if we don't do something with some of this money, I guess there's always a shortage, but there has to be something to, Mm -hmm. keep people engaged in thinking about their neighborhoods something cohesive and team building and spirit esprit de corps and all that stuff because right now we're really yeah we're missing out on that connection like, yeah and I think that that's definitely a conversation that we will be having here pretty soon um because we weren't able to do neighbor fest this year and I don't think we'll be able to do it again next year so then, okay, if we can't do these in-person events, then what? Um, I, I have a meeting scheduled with Daniel Holmesy from San Francisco. They have a different um, approach happening. They're not doing NeighborFest at all. Um, okay. So theirs is a little bit different. Um, so we might be able to think outside the box and consider, we don't necessarily have to do what they're doing. We can do something totally different. Um, but that will definitely, maybe I'll put that on the agenda for December to start that discussion. I just like the mm -hmm. fact that you could unveil something to yeah. a neighborhood and say, this is your neighborhood, be proud. And maybe it could yeah. be an outdoor event that doesn't, I mean, we've, we've had protests, we've had stuff downtown. So yeah. it's not like people aren't doing things. I don't want to go against the COVID rules because that's what everyone has to abide by those and we have to set the example, but it'd be kind of cool. I mean, mm -hmm. people are probably wondering, well, what are we doing with the money? That's kind of what, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking about yeah. doing it or something like that. Okay, Cherie's turn. Okay. Um, so this is kind of one of those challenges with what the CIG was before versus now mm -hmm. and that because it wasn't directed you know we weren't really focusing it around our strategic plan and social cohesion and neighbor and emergency preparedness you know now that the grant program has a very focused goal um, this is one of those projects that you know it's kind of like the Santa Rosa tool library they used to come mm -hmm. to us year after year and we would give them a thousand dollars um, and 
I, you know, I know Judy, I, you know, I was there with the grant process and she got approved through the board every single time. I don't think that would be the problem. I think the problem is that the current CIG grant guidelines, the way they are, I just don't see how she could get the funding for the banners. I mean, maybe, like I said, I said to you, like maybe if she did the neighborhood, if she did neighbor fast plus, but even still, I don't think she could appropriate more than 2000 towards the banners. Um, and the other problem I have with it is that there's the equity issue and both, both sides of the city, you know, this is one of those things that in the past, if you were in the know, there were these mm -hmm. pots of money that you could get access access to and you could get these banners and neighborhood you know and so my other big complaint is that there are whole neighborhoods and whole sections of Santa Rosa that have never <laughs> gotten signage wayfaring any kind of banner indications whatsoever yeah. they've been completely excluded and it's just because they are not in the know about how where the pots of money are and so um my bigger thing about it is neighborhood equity in that if we're going to go there and we're going to make this available, then it needs to be equitable and needs to be broadened out to more neighborhoods. Um, and my other big piece of all this is um, because of the neighborhoods that were selected, there is kind of an economic development side to it. These are historic neighborhoods. They do have a, a tourism element. Um, Burbank has the gardens. Uh, West End has the the round barn. Like, there's another side of it, and so I'm also wondering if there's another, you know, if there's other pots of money out there. But I don't see how the current guidelines with CIG would apply towards this. And I have an equity issue with it being that. Um, if this is going to get opened up, it should be opened up to every neighborhood that wants to participate. It should not just be mm -hmm. a, hey, my neighborhood got this and I want the funding to have it done again. Um, because even under the original CIG, that was not, right. that was, it was not, it was supposed to be one time reimbursement funds towards a project and that the neighborhood had to make a commitment that if it was ongoing, that they would take ownership. And the problem is that year after year after year, they've just applied from different neighborhoods, right? And so they weren't asking for the same neighborhood. And so that's how it got reappro that's how it got reappropriated all those grant cycles. And then Santa Rosa Tool Library, they just made a compelling argument of like, well, all the neighborhoods utilize the service and the, you know, and because there wasn't anything definitive that said the board didn't have to, you know, so they just kind of got slam dunked through year after year after year, which is part of the reason why we were like, okay, well, we want new neighborhoods. We want to identify new neighborhoods. We want to make this more equitable and do a broader outreach. And we want to also focus it around uh, preparedness. And so that's my big challenge with all this, right? Is that could the cab as a board, you know, is there a way to find the money? Probably. But my bigger thing is, is that will the banners, you know, will this be one of those things that create social cohesion and neighborhood engagement, having yeah. these banners re-upped? And if that's not the case, it's like, well, maybe we need to figure out where the money can be from another department or another budget. Um, Cause that's my big thing is like, well, we've kind of directed our funds in a very, in a very specific way. And I don't know how the grant could apply to this, especially cause she's asking for about three grand. And I just don't know, even with the neighborhood fest plus um, piece, I don't yeah. know how it would work. Yeah. And the other side of it is that she's in the know. Part of me is like, you know, she's in the know about CIG and, you know, in the past. And my thing about it is that if this is something that the city is going to be open towards, I kind of feel like it needs to be broadened so that any neighborhood that wants to participate in this has the opportunity to know about it. Um, and I, and you would know this one, Danielle, is I'm pretty sure that it's uh, TPW that has to do the installs. That's right. It is TPW. And so if it's TPW, that's the other big question is that do they yeah. want 
you know, is this a priority for that department? I was like, do they want to be dealing with signs and banners and updates like that? Or do they want to be working on water, sewer, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, there's the, there's the other half of it is that what does Jason's department have the bandwidth for, you know, do they want to be working on fire mitigation? Do they want to be working on infrastructure and maintenance projects that are backlogged as far as I know? Um, or do they oh. want to be hanging banners? <laughs> Also, you just brought up a really good point that <laughs> triggered my memory. CAB also moved in the direction of does this support council goals? Right. Um, so if you think about the council goals right now, there's the crisis goals and then there is the um, tier one goals. Um, and we're, I, I just don't see how an installation of neighborhood banners where does that fit in? I mean, maybe it does somewhere, but I just don't see how that would fit in. Um, whereas like Cherie, you were saying, like they probably have a lot of other things that are priority, like, you know, the rebuild stuff that's going on in response to uh, the glass fire and recovery around the glass fire, um, et cetera. So, yeah. I mean, did Judy oh, Kennedy well. want this to happen like this year or she, no. I don't think she's speaking for Luther Burbank Gardens because mm -hmm. I live in Luther Burbank Gardens and Lois, I think um, she is no longer on the board and she helped apply for that grant that they got already, yeah. Neighborhood Fest. So I thought Judy Kennedy was no longer wanting to be involved in our neighborhood uh, association. So She's I don't, not speaking for Burbank Garden. Okay. She's speaking for all the neighborhoods that originally got. The, okay. She just uh, wanted to re up the original. Yeah. 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 Um, and it, it doesn't look like she's in a hurry. She's kind of just asking around, like, what are her options? And they sent this over to me because she mentioned the CAB grants. And I think they were looking to see if CAB would be okay with giving her the funds to do this again. And it, it was 2014, the last time the grant they applied for this so I honestly that's the other thing I don't think it's quite fair <laughs> if the you know um I think the last time the cab had to make a decision like this I think it was on a project that didn't get completed and it had been like two years between the application and the project so we're talking about six years here yeah so I just but it doesn't really fit the criteria of our our grants now yeah. and yeah. at the same time we aren't doing anything with that money because there's, we can't because now our criteria is right. really linked to na neighborhood fest and we can't have them. So it's kind of like, well, what are you doing with the funds then? That's so, what you have needs to have discussion about is okay. how to proceed. And I, I made a note, I think we'll put this on our December, yeah. um, December I, uh, agenda for discussion. Yeah. I definitely don't want it to be the, the people that always know where the, the money is, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not fair. And then there's like new neighborhoods like Roseland when they love to have a banner, you know, right. Yeah. Banner, yeah. Banner, and coffee strong with all the things that they've been through. It just seems like there's so many. And then I had an idea real quick about, you know, how evacuation we had neighborhood names about if you're in a certain neighborhood, you're supposed to say is, um, that would be one way to <laughs> identify your evacuation zone is like that neighborhood would get a, their banner <laughs> or something because I don't know what the name is. idea. <laughs> I just think it would be kind of, if you could tie them in, it would go with the crisis situation, you yeah. know, evacuation. And I don't know. Yeah. I think that I was having a conversation, um, the Latino advisory committee with the sheriff's office, they were talking about evacuation and they numbered and they did out, uh, letters and numbers for their evacuation zones. And said, well, city of Santa Rosa did names like neighborhood names, right? And so there was a little confusion or whatever. I'm like, it would be kind of cool. Well, anyway, that's just the idea, yeah. kooky idea, but. I think that's a great idea actually, but we would have to bring in, you know, the uh, probably the team that came up with that that process and make sure that yeah. I can change it. <laughs> right, right. Ooh. Well, once you name it, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm with you, Sheree. I don't want it to be exclusive. I don't want it to be the same people getting the same, you know, they 
just kind of know um, and they know how to ask and they know when it all comes out in public. So I like that. It has to be inclusive and everyone has to get the chance to do it. Well, there's that and there's also my big question of do banners create a unifying neighborhood you know I just there's a part of me where it's like I I feel like you know it's it can be a, a, a fun wayfinding opportunity for a neighborhood but I just don't know if it's a driving force around neighborhood cohesion um, being that I live in a neighborhood that's never had banners and being that I, I think about the areas of the downtown corridor that do have the banners. Um, and I kind I'm kind of torn about it in the sense of like, you know, what's the ultimate goal this is a trying to achieve. Um, and, you know, and if it's, if it's a net positive for a neighborhood, well then great, the city needs to find a way to make it inclusive for all neighborhoods to participate in it, right? And to get the wayfinding signs and get the signage available to them. Um, and if it's not, then it kind of needs to be reevaluated because the other part of it for me is how much of the neighborhood is getting to actually participate in the banner selection. How many people are finding out about it the day it goes up and we're roping in another department being TPW. And that's the other big thing is that this is getting forwarded over to the cab but we're not the ones that are going to be getting up on a ladder and installing these things. Right. <laughs> so I want to know if it's even within their scope of, you know, like, cause my understanding is TPW is backlogged and that they're trying to keep up with the existing demands on the potholes, on the light fixtures, on dead animal recovery, on, you know, like on fire mitigation. Like my understanding is, is that TPW has a, work punch list that they can't keep up with the demand as it stands of just basic on schedule city maintenance we'll put that um, for like iron man and and funny uh, how that gets a priority <laughs> and 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 amagen or whatever big deals going yeah. on i mean like somebody puts up those things so oh, yeah why can't the citizens of our own city have our own banners put up if we're putting up banners for corporates because those corporations pay big bucks to get well, that banner location. There's also a, um, a banner. I think, I don't know if it went into effect. I think they were working on it, a banner policy. So I have to check in with that team too. Ooh, and, that's a yeah. good I have to also remember that being downtown, you get inundated with closures, people, parking, you get impacted. Yeah. So to me, it's like, well, you know, if we're, the reason why people come to Santa Rosa and I do live in one of those neighborhoods and it's annoying sometimes because I'm hearing mm -hmm. music every Sunday afternoon in, in, in Luther Burbank or in Julia Park, you know, but it's also fun too. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like I have a different view of it and I feel like it is cohesion. It is pulling your neighborhood together. Um, I don't know. I, I was... I was also into team sports, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, that's the way it was. So anyway, well, I, I think those are all good points. So, um, so do you guys want me to bring this to the cab or should I just have a conversation with uh, Judy and see if I can point her in the direction of, you know, like the public arts program or some other funding source? Tourism. Tourism. <laughs> I mean, I don't, well, here's the think? other part is, okay, so the ask is at 50 bucks a piece, right? So times the 57, so you're looking at like three grand, right? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm just like, I'm rereading the thing here of, oh, this was Bob Blanchard. Holy cow. We are going into the back, the back here. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, Danielle, I would start with shooting an email over to TPW and finding out what the backlog is on their okay. side of things. Um, if we want to bring this forward to the cab, we can. Is she asking? So she's asking for about $3,000 from the community advisory board. 
I would ask staff, is there a, I don't know if there's a line item budget for something like this. We don't even have a marketing budget. So that's part of my concern is like, you know, first of all, it's a grant program. So we'd be taking money out of the grant program. We'd, so we'd have to, we'd have to justify changing the rules of CIG for this. Right. I don't want to change the rules. And I just think that maybe we're not the right place for this type of project. And why does her group or these select people just get to have banners. I mean, we're back to the inclusion exclusion. Yeah. Thing. Like there's so many things that are not fitting in our, in our wheelhouse on this. And I think that before we even contact public works is like, we're not even to the right place yet. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe so, you go back to, to Judy and just like get, you know, I mean, you could put the, the ball in her court of like, well, here, you know, you can send the historical document and say, you know, that this was funded through CIG um, in the years past, the community advisory board voted in 2018 to update the CIG grant application guidelines to align yeah. with neighbor fest and send her over the CIG application and say, you know, these are the latest guidelines and when we reopen the grant cycle, if you want to be put up for, you know, like, I don't think that we have to make a decision. I think we can just hand her back. Here's the work that we did as a board. Here's what the CIG application looks like. Should we, you know, if there is an opportunity to open up the grants in 2021 for the 2022 cycle, you know, Burbank Gardens is welcome to apply and <laughs> take it off our plate. Because I just think that once she takes a look at the current CIG guidelines, she's going to go, oh, I'd have to host a neighbor fest. And she knows that. Yeah. We also have one already on the, on the, in the gate waiting to happen. I mean, her, Lucy Burbank already has one that it didn't happen this year that getting put over. So yeah, she's a couple years away from getting or no, it. It happened. Theirs was 2018. No, no 2019. we had a pilot. That was we part had of the pilot program. Oh, right. So they are going to have one in 2021. Mm -hmm. So wait, that means that there's appropriated funds to the tune of probably 2,500 bucks, right? Like to me, it's in the wrong place. I don't even think we have to go that far. I just yeah. think that it doesn't meet our guidelines. We change them. And maybe there's a different city department yeah. that might be able to take this up. Yeah, I'll, I'll do some research and then reach out to her um, and see who I can connect her with. That might be the easiest way. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay. I don't think we have any. Um, where is it? <laughs> I'm looking for the 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 agenda again. We're at the end, right? I mean, we're just yeah. uh, turning. Okay. So I guess at six forty-three, we're adjourning the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Danielle. Yeah. I showed Corey that picture and he just laughed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys yeah. were so young. We were. We were like ridiculously young. So, <laughs> all right. Nice well, to see you, you, ladies.